In this lesson, we're going to take a look at using spot grids for our lighting. Most of the times you see people using soft boxes and umbrellas, but raw direct spotlight also brings out a lot of texture. And remember, we don't always have to take the photograph in one photograph. We can reprocess a raw file many different ways. And in this case, we're actually going to shoot two parts of the background. We're going to create a selective focus image in a very different way. We're actually going to shoot one shot for the foreground and a separate shot for the background. And then we're going to do some interesting things in Photoshop and try some techniques to make this shot really illustrative looking. I've got a spot grids are like a honeycomb grid that allows us to narrow the beam of light. Instead of having a widespread, it has a very, very narrow spread. So I've got a very, very narrow, they come in different sizes, of course. The smaller the honeycomb, the more narrow the spread of light. And I've got a fairly uh, small one in the, in the front light, and it's coming down here, and it's focusing the light beam directly right on the front of this little cool television clock. This is made by one of my assistants. And uh, the uh, secondary light here I've got coming down, and it's just using a, a little bit wider spot grid to give me a bigger beam of light, and it's sort of coming down and giving me the spotlight effect. As I'm looking through the camera, I've got it kind of roughed in here, and I think we'll go ahead and move right into the live remote shooting to take a look at that. And I'll go ahead and rotate the image. And I like the look of this. This is actually um, showing it what it would look like on daylight. As I look at this image right here, it's showing me what the yellowness of it is because it's, it's set right now for the daylight exposure of the strobe, um, which actually, as I see that, might be actually very, very nice. So, We'll be able to choose that later. Once we bring the image into RAW, of course, we'll be able to make a decision if we like the warm color or a more neutral color. Let me go ahead and set this to tungsten so you can see the difference. By in tungsten, white balance, everything should come out fairly warm. What I'm looking for is that there is some definite, in that background light, if I turn off the foreground light, we can see in the background light that I'm getting a definite separation from the edges. And this in particular type of shot here is almost going to be a silhouette. So if we took, uh, actually, if we took this image, we're going to keep this front light off and just have that background light fire. We'll have this as a silhouette. And then we'll take that image, and we'll probably do a very, very heavy blur on it. Now, we could blur it in the camera. But if I blur it in the camera right now, then I'm really stuck with that. That's, I, if I, once I tear the set down and then later on go back to Photoshop and work on it, and I say, oh, you know, I should have not quite had it so blurry. But if I do it later in the post-production, I'll have control from slightly out of focus to almost obliterated. And what that should do for us is give us kind of a black edge glow around the whole thing. And then we can sort of take the other exposure that we'll do with the other light and do that as a separate exposure. And we'll paint that detail in with a layer mask. Uh, if I need to, of course, I could check the depth of field. But I'm choosing a uh, exposure that actually brings a lot of depth of field in. Even though it's going to be selective focus, I am actually shooting this thing at 125th at f22. So on this lens, f22, this lens goes to f32. We're using the, the 90 tilt shift. Um, and I have it pretty much leveled off. We're not doing any real shifts here. We're just basically using it as a regular lens. It's just, it's just a really good uh, format. The 90 millimeter lens is a nice for digital photography, being that I just get a little farther away, and it sort of compresses my product. Um, if, when, you're, when you're doing product photography, especially if you're doing several shots at once, or several products on the set at once, you need to make sure that you compress that so they have a, a similar size relationship. So that's why we like the 90 millimeter lens in the studio. Let's just go ahead and take our first photograph, and it's just going to fire the background light. We're, at a, we're using a fairly low amount of power, only on 50 watt seconds, and we are spot gridded down. So we'll take an image, let that bring in here, and see what we have. And I can see from here that it's doing pretty much exactly what I want. I can literally make it a little more silhouetted if I need to. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to drop the light down. I want to see just a little bit more on the bottom part of the legs here. So I'm going to bring and just wheel that forward just a little bit. Because when I make that out of focus, I'm looking for an outline on that. Of course, we can look at that at live focus. If you're working with an art director, they could stay back at the computer, look at it live focus, and you move things around. Uh, we'll just take another shot and update the image. And that is looking pretty much what I was looking for in here. I think that is just about, it's got a kind of a glowy feel. It's almost like a very natural vignette feeling. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm happy with that look. 
So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and move my sink over to the other camera so that we don't have to do a thing, just move it over, makes it simpler. And I'll plug it in here. Okay, and let's see what happens. We'll turn this light on and turn this light off. We no longer need the spotlight. And we'll take another photograph. And again, we're not moving the camera, we're not moving the set, we're not moving the, you know, anything around with the lights other than just, just turning the other light on. Uh, so we should be able to get a perfect pin registration. And that's key, that's very key in Photoshop is the fact that if we don't move things, we can shoot the images over and over and over again, lighting any particular part we want, and then merge all these pieces together. There's no reason why we have to make it all work out in one shot when we have the power of Photoshop to merge the images together. I'm not trying to make it harder, it's about making a decision where is the best place to do it. 90% of the time you want to try to do as much of it in the camera as possible, but this one allows me to have this extra control of saying I want just as much amount of blur, just amount of foreground light, of sharpness on top of the blur, and then try some different filter effects. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be okay because we're going to get a silhouette on the antennas, and I'm probably okay with that. Just make one, let me just, just pull it in a little bit tighter. Maybe just take one more and we get a little bit off the dome right there. I like the little bit of fall off that happens at the very top. We'll fire it one more time. I can fire it, of course, from the camera itself, from the remote trigger. I can also fire it right here from the screen. So I'm just standing on the screen very carefully. We're on a very sturdy, heavy tripod. Everything's really locked down well. I can just click here and fire another image. Just have both of them as a, as a guide. Now when we actually, I like this one a little better because I like the fact that I can see that edge right here if I need it. That one leg back here will be obviously part of the other shot. It'll be a very blurry. But when we actually bring these two images together, we'll have a very, very cool look. And this is something that I think is very popular with a lot of clients I've done over the years, is to create a controllable, selective focus, two-shot image, one for the background, one for the foreground, put it all together, have total control.